morning. Welcome to Pine Grove General Baptist Church. I'm so glad that you can be here watching us at home or if you're here this morning. Uh, just join right in. This is your place to your time to worship along with us. Join me in this prayer. Father, we praise you this morning for being the king of the universe, for being the great and mighty. Your works are just and true and are glorious, O oh Lord. We have no conception of what you have done and what you can do and what you will do. Lord, we just thank you this morning that you're here with us. And we ask you, Lord, to look down on all of our community and all of the people around us throughout the world who are sick and who are undone, Lord. Uh, if they're sick in body or mind, spirit, whichever, you are the comforter. You are the one who has the cure, Lord. Not man. Yours is the ultimate cure, the absolute truth. Lord, we pray this morning for the bereaved, those who've lost loved ones all around the nations, all around our land, and uh, Lord, bring them comfort, for again, you are the comforter. You are the, you're the one who has the answers for everything that's wrong. Lord, we pray for the lost, we pray for the uncaring, those who just do not care, who go on day by day, doing what they would do and ignoring uh, the correct path, Lord, make them stumble, make them fall. I keep praying this, Lord, that you knock them down so that they have to look up. And when they look up, that they find you, Lord. Use us as you can, that we can plant seeds that they can find, that they will, that they will find a way that they come to you. And Lord, we pray for our leaders, our local leaders, our state leaders, our national leaders, the world leaders all around the world, Lord. That the world is in a terrible time, and these leaders you have put in place, and they should be working your will. And Lord, knock them down until they do. And whatever that will is, Lord, we know that you work out everything for our best for those who love you. And so, Lord, we pray that, and we pray that you will be here this morning and touch me. And Lord, that I'll say something and that you would have me to say. The only the things that you would have me to say, none of me, all of you, Lord, and to all of you, the glory forever and forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Christ died for all. We should have the opportunity to have our sins forgiven and gain eternal life in his presence. I'm going to read it one more time this morning, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Christ came to set us free. He came to set us free. That's the truth. He, he came to teach us. No matter what situation you come from, you can make the choice to make him your Savior and Lord of your life. It does not matter what you've done. No one has to be enslaved by the sin of this world. You just don't have to, no matter what people tell you. But there's only one way to be truly free from that enslavement, and not by any code of man, not by any rules we might post or put up, not by any rule of government and any nation. Uh, we're only truly free when we give our life completely to Jesus Christ. And by giving up what we do and what we have and taking his, we're truly set free. The actual bottom line is found in John 3.36. It says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. Once again, that's the most important message the world has ever heard. And now you've heard it one more time this morning. And the question is, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Now, it's been, we've been doing Bible studies in, on Zoom, as I've mentioned many times. And you're perfectly welcome to join us. The information is on our Facebook page, however you would go to get there. But this past week, we studied... Uh, the Old Testament book of Haggai. And we did that Thursday evening, and this, this was part of our series of Bible studies that we have been covering in the Minor Prophets. And ever since then, I believe God has kept a point of that study on my mind until now. And I just have to let you know. And it appears to me that there are two completely opposite ways of thinking. And though they are complete opposites, they become both become the most destructive courses that we can take. 
they're comparable to driving a really fast high power car and in my past i have weaknesses for that and this is the two dangers that can come from that and the first one is the one we usually think of and that's taking off and going into full speed ahead no thought of where it's going to lead us just accelerating continually and very often into destruction and that's one of the two opposite the opposite destructive way though it's slower is just as deadly every bit as deadly after taking off forcefully and suddenly we apply the brakes so firmly that we skid into the snare of what I'm going to call not yet slowing down completely to a stop maybe to never start again we slip into a state of that nasty word called procrastination and we're allowing our own justifications to tell us why we should wait and wait and wait still longer until it becomes a very destructive situation and such was the situation that the people in Haggai's time found themselves they'd been released from captivity in Babylon and sent with the wherewithal to do it to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem only to start and then to stop so we looked at this I'm not going to stay here long but I want you to uh, turn to Haggai chapter 1 verse 3 and it says then the Lord the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your panel houses while this house remains a ruin well I'm going to read something by a, a pastor of a church in New York City his name is Charles Force Deans and he was born in 1820 passed away from this life in 1893 but he was pastor of the Church of the Strangers in New York City from 1868 to 1893 and I came across this passage and I want to read to you part of it not nearly all but I want to share this with you um, he wrote the cause of God in all ages suffers more from its professed friends than from its open foes it was the selfishness sloth carelessness and apathy of the Jews of Haggai's time which caused the work to cease after the foundation had been laid so it is now it was not the Samaritan intrigue but the Jewish apathy of the time which permitted the temple to lie so long unfinished the apathy not the opposition not the opposition the address of the prophet is to those who admitted the claim but answered not yet the work was to be done at some time but not yet the time has not come causes also the postponement of an honest self-examination every reasonable man admits that it is of the utmost importance that every man know all about himself self-deception does no good it is senseless to prefer a brief enjoyment of false security but a strictly honest self-examination is painful it is always a revelation of defects often of deformities self-searching will lead us to repentance and faith and a Christian life that's for the unrepentant, for those lost out there but not yet don't do it now but lastly we come back inside the church and professing Christians all unite in acknowledging that the greatest thing should be done for Jesus why are not those things done by us because we are the people who say the time has not come the time that the Lord's house should be built how many evils come of procrastination especially to those who admit that what they put off must certainly be done now that was written back in the 1870s I believe and it still holds true today that's why I wanted to share that with you it, it is a very true analysis of the way things are in the way when we put on the brakes too quickly come to a screeching halt and don't move the Bible speaks of many times in situation where putting off is to be avoided now I want to share mainly three of those with you and I think you'll agree we're gonna do this very briefly this morning 
But the very first thing that should be avoided is seeking God. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Know that the Lord, who provides the pardon of sin and salvation of the soul, is to be found in this world, not in another. His kingdom is now. He is here. The Lord is here. And he is willing and waiting for us to call on him, to seek him. See, the Lord is not meant to be found on a deathbed at the end of life. It's, that's not the way things are to be. But yet, we seem to think that we can wait, and we can wait, and we can wait. But the Lord is more likely to be found now than at any future time, because this very minute may be the last. We should never put off seeking God. Secondly, we should never put off or say not yet to listening to God. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7 says, So as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness. Now we know that this is written to the Hebrew people and that they were tested it when they were in the wilderness, but I propose to you that each of us probably spent way too much time in our own wilderness. I know I did. And when we're not listening to God, uh, as the Holy Spirit, we in us we might as well be back in the depths of the deepest, deepest, deepest jungle, wandering around trying to find our own way. When we're not listening to God, we're on the other, trying to find our own way. That's when our hearts become more and more determined to do things our way, and thus are hardened towards God. Because that's what man does. We must not fall into that snare of not yet. The longer we stay in the wilderness, it's the harder it is to get out. Instead of putting off, spend more time listening to God. That's the second one. The other thing that we should never avoid, we should never put off, is to praise God. Praising God can be continuously. It doesn't have to be right here at church. It doesn't have to be through songs. It doesn't have to be through a group effort. It can just simply be when you lift your hands high and say, Praise God! Thank you, Lord! 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. How? I want to ask you this. How could we ever give enough praise and thanks to God who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and who sent him here to die for us so that we could have salvation. He deserves the praise of every human being. He has infinite mercy to the world. He delays and delays and allows more and more to come to him. He sent the ultimate redemption, Jesus Christ. We cannot put off we cannot say not yet to praise in God. Now I have a few quotes in this and I want to read another one. You, you may not know who this was and I, I've heard of him and I sort of remember him, but Sam Levinson, an American humorist and a comic, he was born in 1911, he died in 1980. He said something that's very, very poignant to what I'm talking about today. He said, I'm going to stop putting things off starting tomorrow. Now that was meant to be a joke, but it's sadly quite true. And some will wait too long, way past tomorrow into another tomorrow and another one. But maybe not at the end of their life, but even if they're still living, would it not be sad to say that I put it off to tomorrow and then come to the realization and say this, if only I had spoken to my friend about knowing God. But he passed away yesterday. 
I wonder if he gave his life to Jesus. Would that be a terrible question to ask ourselves? And I'm afraid that I've been guilty of that. Putting it off. Time's not yet. Now, just a few, couple words to some young people who are out there, and I want you to hear this. Ecclesiastes 12 and 1, and I want you to know that the present is the best time, no matter what your age. Ecclesiastes 12 and 1 says, Remember your creator, creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. You know, when we're young, we give ourselves to mirth and to having fun. And, and that, that's the nature of being young. But as we go along, we also have the problem that we believe there will always be more time. But I'm going to have you another verse. The writer of Proverbs sets us straight on the uncertainty of life, even for a young person. Proverbs 27 and 1 says, Do not boast about tomorrow. For you do not know what a day may bring. Before you learn how to put things off, before you tread near the snare of not yet, when you come to the age of understanding that is right and this is wrong, make the right choice. Turn to God. Don't put it off. You may not have tomorrow, even for young people. That is true. Uh, an, an old English proverb says that, and this is what can be done at any time, is never done at all. Think about that. What can be done at any time is never done at all. You know, I have some chores that I do at home, and I'm bad about putting them off, and sometimes I just flat forget. But don't like that. Listen to this. What can be done at any time is never done at all. You need to take heed to that proverb and that it doesn't become the tale of your life, the story of your life, or the story of your end. It's another writer. I know I'm giving you a lot of quotes and a lot of things, but this is what, how I wanted to share this morning's message with you. There's a man named William Buck, and he wrote that there is a huge danger in delay. And in this story of ancient Rome, he relates that on the Ides of March, that sees, you know, the days, the Ides of March, Caesar had a letter given to him by Artemidorus. In the morning, he went to the Senate. In this letter, the notice was given him of the conspiracy that was against him by his murderers, those who wanted to be, who were wanting to kill him. So, he got that letter in the morning and that with ease he might have prevented his death. But he put it off. And neglecting the reading of it, he was slain. We all know that story. And that was the death of Julius Caesar. And I want to give you the ultimate warning against the snare of not yet. Because the time of his coming, or what is substantially the same thing to us, Yes, we're waiting for the impending return of Jesus Christ. I wait for that each day. I long for that. I want him to come back. I want this world to be set straight. I, I don't know how it will happen, but it's in his hands. I don't try to get into all those what's and wherefores, but I know that it's coming. But what's substantially the same thing to us is the time of our death is equally and awfully uncertain. It should always be considered as it's at hand. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 says, The end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray, that you may have time to come to God, is what he's talking about. Now all those things we shouldn't avoid. I want to leave you with a little bit of a different note. I want to tell you that there's only one thing that is safe to say, not yet. In another proverb, I found this when I was looking for illustrations for the message this morning. And it, it's very, very good. There is one thing that according to a Slovakian proverb is okay to put off to tomorrow. And it says anger 
is the only thing to put off until tomorrow. And I'd like to add and then hope that that tomorrow never comes. So this morning, if you're here or you're watching from home, you know that you need to work on putting God first in your life. Now, after what we've just talked about, you also know that the time is now, not later. There may not be another time. There may not be another time to make things right with God. And it's a warning. I want you to know that. Don't go and say that you're not warned. There may not be another time. So go to God in your own way. Make things right. Don't leave this building. Don't leave wherever you're at until you do that. I'm not going to guide you through that this morning. God's touching into your heart. All you need to do is talk to Him. But I do want to leave you in, with this. If you're watching from home and you don't have a regular church, find one today in whatever community you're in, one that offers true teaching of the Word of God. Not made of stories. Not a group of just programs. Not a group of just incentives for you to come. Find a church that teaches the Word of God. That's what's necessary. You may not have a long time to find one. You may not have it another day. If you're in Greer's Ferry area, here in northern Arkansas, and you're looking for a place to worship, we'd love to have you come and worship with us. We would. We'd love to talk about the true Word of God. We love to hear your concerns. What bothers you? How God can help with that. So if you want to find us, we're at 102 Silver Rock Road in Shirley, Arkansas. We're Pine Grove General Baptist Church. And I do appreciate this time with you on the ones who are watching from home. But that invitation stands. We'd love to have you come. You want to join one of our interactive Bible studies? Instructions are on our Facebook page. You're always welcome to join that as well. And now, I want to leave you and say that I hope you have a great day, that you have a great week, that you have, until we meet again, that you enjoy the Lord and you don't put it off any longer of making whatever, if there's any barriers between you and God, get rid of them now. Holy Father, we thank you for this time this morning. Lord, I appreciate that you're here with us and that you're lifting me up, Lord, and giving me the courage to say the things that you would have me to say because, Lord, without you, I would never, ever be standing here. As you know very well, I put off and put off and wasted years when I should have been standing up for you. Lord, let people who are hearing my voice this morning and hearing your voice and the Holy Spirit tugging at their heart. Lord, that they give in to you and that they know that right now is the time or it may be the last. Lord, go with us as we leave you, as we leave this house. Lord, make the way's path safe. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Everybody have a great day.